What is going on? You are watching and listening to Tags Podcast, aka Talk About Gay Sex, the live edition. I'm your host, Steve V. This is episode 380 alongside Cody Maurice Doggett. How the hell are you doing, Cody? Hello, darling. I'm doing well, thank you. How are you doing this evening? Excellent, excellent, I love really. It. Girl, this is an exciting show. I am in the Bay Area, California, Oakland, California, right now visiting a show on the road here on this. So many topics to talk about on this episode. No, right? Ricky Martin's alleged restraining order, Bad Bunny flashed a heart on, and a drag queen was caught sniffing poppers on live TV. TV? What? That's a lot. What? Yeah. We're we being crazy today. <laughs> we have a lot to talk about. All those topics are on this show. And by the way, this week, I am here in the Bay Area, California until July 12th. And I'm going to see if you listen to one of our episodes, Baloney, the documentary, Ooh. Baloney, the movie about a male get queer burlesque company. And I'm going to go see it at the Oasis this Friday. I'm a little nervous because they might pull me up on stage and you never know what they're going to do on this. It's all male burlesque. It's super hot, sexy, but I'm excited. I'm going Friday night. got my tickets. Nice. Are you going to burlesque for us? We need uh, all video. Uh, I'm not in rehearsal, so no, I am not. <laughs> Come on. I will have a cocktail in we hand. style it. And let them do the work. But if you want, if you're in San Francisco, see this show. It's here for a couple of weeks. Baloney at the o Oasis Theater in San Francisco. You don't want to miss it. As well as you can see the movie. Baloney the movie. But you got to see it like Bianca Del Rio. Baloney. Baloney. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. Yes, exactly. Well, we have got to get into so many topics, including, did you guys hear about Q Nightlife Q Club in San Francisco? The drama that has unfolded. The drama. <laughs> Just to give you guys an update on what we are talking about, the nightlife venue is called Q in New York City. It had a bunch of celebrity backers, including... Mm -hmm. Billy Porter, including Charlie Carver, you guys might know him. He's a twin, including a few other celebrities. Zachary Quinto. Zach, who I love. They were yes. just supporters of it. Well, allegations were released in the piece in this publication on July 2nd. And I'm talking about Instinct Magazine regarding New York nightlife titan, The Q. Between owners Alan Pickus, Frankie Sharp, and Bob Fluett, reverberated throughout New York City nightlife and beyond the moment they were released. While Bob Fluitt did release a detailed statement on allegations of racism, mm -hmm. underage patrons, and transphobia, among other egregious behavior, in a previous article, the voice of nightlife impresario Frankie Sharp remained yep. silent until now. Mm -hmm. And I'll just read you what he wrote in light of recent events with respect to my ownership of the queue and my erstwhile partners. Uh, the, it has occurred to me that I must take some kind of initial public statement. I believe that the claims speak for itself and everything I have claimed is factual and supported by evidence. He, I was in a word gaslit, he mm -hmm. uses the word gaslit, the deterioration of the corporate culture at the queue did not happen overnight, he writes, these things never do, and I must presume that the partners in the beginning had to keep me compliant at least long enough to acquire ownership of my intellectual properties, my credibility, access to my celebrity investors, and entry into my social networks. Wow. He goes on to say, I was frightened, diminished, silenced, and intimidated, but ultimately just deeply disgusted by circumstances around my club. And then I was then chiefly worried about protecting myself. He goes on to say, essentially, at one point, one of the 
owners told him that if you're going to do a Latin night, make sure it's the good Latins. I'm paraphrasing, but essentially said the good Latins, not the Blatinos. Is My skin thing. is boiling a little bit. I'm sorry. I <laughs> bet that it is. Mine is too when I heard that, that's, just because, that's crazy. yeah, I'll read a couple other things, but celebrities came out. They've already canceled a bunch of drag queen shows. People like Boomer Banks, Richard Cortez, Greg Scarnici, and LA Drag Dynamo, Rhea Litra, all showing their unyielding support for Sharp, the guy that I just read his post for. What are your thoughts about this? And why are we hearing about racism within our community in 2022? I mean, obviously things exist like this, but yeah, it's crazy to me. It's crazy. And the queue is such a beautiful spot. Like the... The yeah, the space layout of it is amazing. And I've only been there twice, but I've never really experienced any type of discrimination while I was there. But this really, honestly, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, the allegations that were raised against Alan, Alan Pikus, I think it's more directed towards Alan than Bob, because Bob does come out and say, uh, he kind of distanced himself from Alan a little bit and because he owns Boxers and Hush Bar as well. So in order to keep that those two bars a little bit safe, I think he kind of distanced himself in a statement on the on Instagram. Right. Um, so I don't know Alan personally, but it highlights a colorism issue that is prevalent in the gay community and in the Latin community and even in the Black community. So I'm... Not surprised that this happened, but I am very by the outpouring of love that Frankie Sharp is receiving from all the all the celebrities that you mentioned. Keisha Carr came out in support of him. Just read Patrick Crow came out in support of him. And there have been so many posts that, that have outlined and kind of backed up what Frankie has said. So you know I'm it's just really it's crazy because I don't know if you remember years ago before Rebar in New York City became Rebar. Oh, yeah. It was G Lounge for those yep. of you that traveled to New York City. And G Lounge found itself in a pickle for a period of time because certain nights had a sort of a cool hip hop, urban. Yeah. I love those nights. I would go on many Me of those too. nights. They were so and fun. <laughs> they got <laughs> themselves into a lot of. Actually, no, it was Rebar, the bar that's there now not yeah it was the one that's currently now and they had a one of their owners their current owners i know them because we've done our tags live at rebar so i'm friends with some of the owners but they got themselves in some trouble early on when they said no hats baseball hats can be yep. worn and they were that was actually part of their mantra of what they were looking for Address on code. piecing people out of the line and they managed to apologize time went on and they were able to get themselves out of that it's thriving now and it has a very diverse crowd of people in there but it really pissed off a lot of people it did they did survive for a while yeah they survived this do you think that the queue can survive like rebar did at this point so I don't think that they can survive with Alan Pikus there. I think that they need to, like Bob he needs to go. did. Yeah, they need to distance themselves from him. And, and because that that's just not allowed nowadays. And he has said what uh, Rebar did uh, is they kind of established a dress code that was kind of discriminatory You're using and air so quotes for those who listening to the <laughs> <laughs> we have a listening audience too that yes. listens to this show air, air quotes kind of discriminatory and it's it's blatantly discriminatory because yeah actually it they, they just wanted to weed out all of the the people of color and black and people from urban areas so yeah yes so i think that what they did could be forgiven more or could be they could take steps to actually remedy that or make up for that. What Alan Pike has said is com there's no coming back from that as far as I'm concerned. I will never support anything that he's ever that he is behind ever again.
Well, you bring up a great point that happens in Hollywood all the time and cancel culture, but this is relevant cancel culture that get rid of Picus. If this is true, based on yeah. what we're reading and the allegations that are out there, again, and it's all alleged, and all of the support that we are seeing for one of the owners. Although I don't know if he's out, if he's stepped away from this because it's he's involved in a lawsuit. Yeah, but I think he has stepped away. If to your point, because they are losing shows drag shows people are pulling their parties and booking them in other establishments so if they can get if they can get rid of the one bad apple in the mix because they put all of this time money it is a great venue when you do come it you know we hope that you get to see it listeners because it really is a great venue yeah and it does have some good backers like billy porter like zachary quinto like charlie carver in the mix that put their seal of approval on it initially but they didn't sign up for this i guarantee you that <laughs> um, definitely not billy porter would never oh, <laughs> never honey i love we are live guys and People are watching us. Caladad says, um, what does he say? Because there was a comment in there earlier that in our live feed. He says he loves his Latinos. I yes. double love my Latinos. And gagging, thank goodness for the sol solidarity. And I couldn't agree more because, you know, you can't, Latinos, we're a part of the Latino culture and you can't exclude us. So, yeah. And I think it's a, yeah, it's a, a beautiful culture out of Latino. I learned so much about it when I moved to New York City, learning so much about the Puerto Ricans and the Dominicans and yeah. all the that I'm Mexican and from the West Coast, but I live in New York now. And I love the culture. We were talking offline about an amazing festival that happens every year in Cathedral City, otherwise known close to Palm Springs as Oasis. Oh, yes. Is, and they have a yearly event, and it's all Latino oh festival my. that happens in beautiful Cathedral City every year. I want to go to it. I know you want to go to it, too. I want to go so bad. They what should was the name Dakota Oasis, not Latino Oh, Oasis. okay. You should, <laughs> we should have you be a, maybe a representative from Tag's podcast oh, yes. for next I'm year. For it. Yes, the Let's, Grand Marshal. Show Cody a Latino Oasis. I love 2023. it. 2023. Let's yeah. <laughs> let's we're gonna reach out to them and let's see. Let's do it. Yeah, I think that would be fun. And we can maybe do a live show there on the premises of a reworked version, of course, by the poolside. Well, it would, <laughs> would be a speedos, lot of fun. In our in speedos, our no of realm. course. Which was what was the shout out to that designer? I don't know if you have it up on no your realm. screen. No Rao. Is that yes. the designer? That, that is the designer. Yeah. Yeah. For it's Latino so swimwear. And there are people that are recognizing it. And I can't believe it's embarrassing that you and I are, reside in New York. And we have to even report on this story of of inclus non-inclusivity that I can't exactly. believe it. But it's existing. We will continue to report on that as it comes out. Well, we have to keep reporting on monkeypox. And this time, a San Francisco event organizers warned about monkeypox. City numbers more than double. Organizers of two large pre-Pride dance parties, because, you know, all the Pride parties are over now. Fourth of yeah. July is over. So now we're, like COVID, kind of seeing the repercussions of things like monkeypox. Mm -hmm. Well... These dance party parties have alerted attendees that people known or suspected to have monkeypox were present at some of these events. And on July wow. 5th, the San Francisco Department of Public Health updated its count of known or probable monkeypox cases to 40, more than doubling since last week. Other parties comfort and joy the queer community and arts collective that hosted Afterglow on Saturday, June 25th, sent an email blast stating that it had received a plausible report that an attendee tested positive for monkeypox and organizers of the Electro Locks Pride Party on June 24th did the same on their Facebook page. Also, one of my favorite spaces here in the Bay Area, it's a oh? sex club. Oh, also had the Steamworks Bathhouse in Berkeley, which just reopened not that long ago. 
sent out an alert to patrons July 5th in its statement that the Berkeley Health Department informed it that over the past month, some of its members have either been confirmed or probable cases of monkeypox have been determined. Oh, wow. Dates the person or persons visited between May 27th and 29th, June 3rd through the 4th, June 10th and June 17th. This is real. It's one of the reasons yeah. that I was telling you, Cody, that I didn't go to any partake in any of the after hours parties in New York Pride or mm -hmm. any of the parties that were happening. I didn't even hook up with people at the Eagle in like I like to do because I knew, <laughs> well, I knew what's going on and yeah. I knew I was coming here to the Bay Area, California. I knew I was going to see my mom and I thought, you know what? No, I did have fun. I had someone visit me. I met, I did meet one person that knew me from the Bay Area here. Okay. On the final night of Gay Pride, I went to his hotel room. We took a shower together. I inspected his body. Oh my. But you it was better also, do the inspection. It was a week out, and he is in a relationship. And this was his only, he, we had a conversation. Like you said, you want your friend when he stays with you to have a conversation mm -hmm. with those he sleeps with these days. I had a conversation. And he had not slept with anybody but his boyfriend. He was on a business trip. And we we got down and dirty. Hey, that's what's up. Do that inspection first. Make sure that you get it in. And um, I'm just glad that they are being so forthcoming and really trying to get ahead of this. Everybody just needs to be informed and as safe as possible. And also props to Jared Stanley for highlighting that this is just not a gay something that gay men have to worry about anyone can get monkeypox, and everybody should be wary and as safe as possible yeah and you were saying on a previous episode cody that sometimes you can't tell a week out or mm -hmm. it shows up a little bit later i think we need to be diligent about back to being diligent we were with covid our community is known for being troopers with hiv Monk with COVID. Now we have monkeypox, meningitis. We talk about, I just think it's the sign of the times and no one's saying don't have fun. Look at yeah. what's in your schedule and your proximity of who you're going to be seeing anytime soon. Like I did. Mm -hmm. And by all means, if you see something on your body, see your doctor, they won't judge you, but you need to get that taken care of. What are the people saying, Cody? So before we move on, Callie Dad is just saying, Jesus wept, no more monkey pox. There's a lot of comments in the chat about you and the business trip ah. and your visitor. <laughs> do you want really a couple? Yes, no? of course. I please mean, do. Uh, half well, of them I'll, are for me. Before so. you, <laughs> I, you know what? I hit the jackpot on this guy. That, yeah. So something didn't quite work out with a guy that I had just met in Providence, Rhode Island the week before. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And he came and stayed with me. I barely met him. He came and stayed with me the next weekend for Gay Pride New York. Or excuse me, Pride. He kept correcting me, too. And then he's correct for correcting me. It's Pride. Uh -huh. I kept saying Gay Pride. It's not Gay Pride. It's Pride. And... We had a good time up until we didn't have a good time at the very end. We got Ooh. into a, a disagreement <laughs> and he left me, which was fine, and went and got a hotel room. We've since mended mended it and we're, I'm not, it's all good. We're not we're a match. However, yeah. I salvaged my night and met this person that, that, from, that was on a business trip. Guess what oh, business he? Business. Guess what business he works for? Oh, is he in the business of you? Wait, what? Oh, I'm he sorry. He works for wet lubrication. Wet, oh my does... gosh, we need a we need so that sponsor. He after we had fun and used wet in a many different ways, uh -huh. and I inspected his body. He ended up giving me so many bottles of sample bottles of wet. I've hit the jacket. It was like ding, 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 wet more. I I have so many, and they're the type of bottle that you can put in your sock if you're okay. at jock strap night and want need nice. some lube it's that kind of samples and he handed me like <laughs> tons of them i felt like i hit the jack rock ding, 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 ding. where are mine share well, them well i will share a few with you when you come over when i see you after i do an inspection <laughs> on your body oh. <laughs> <laughs> but beyond 
yeah I'm, to- okay. I'm totally down for it because i'm gonna know, hose you down real. i will uh, hose you down in the back alley the, the contamination i get it <laughs> the good news though he said he's he, they might consider being a sponsor on tags podcast I love next it. cycle next you know next how they're cycle. always in cycles okay. of they're allocated so much fun product first okay, okay. we can child you've had wet before up your butt <laughs> um, <laughs> i forget i forget it's been so long they <laughs> you know <laughs> i got a bad memory girl <laughs> blake says i hope they were silicon it was a combo i got he you know because he's a he does special events for wet and he had yeah. a layover in new york city and believe me i got some Sil- personal lube as well as silicon lube so yeah james says can someone examine me hi james watching hi, us james. live we love it any more comments before i queue up our next topic cody um do you want me to read some of the other ones about yes because your... i got to queue up this next topic oh fabulous so everybody said we're saying was saying that oh blake put in the comments he put in air in quotation marks visit. And I said, I know, right? Visit in quotation marks. And he and Blake said, I guess it was a business trip. And I said, a blow job is still a job, right? <laughs> 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 and Callie that says, I'm sure they were taking care of business, wink. And and then I mean, that's the end. <laughs> you know what was crazy about this hookup that I met uh-huh. that I'm talking about was that he actually said we know each other from the 90s in San Francisco. I didn't remember him, but he remembered me. And he's, I said, was I nice to you? And he's like, no, <laughs> you were really <laughs> nice. Like, we have to he's like, oh, I know. I, know. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. But the way he's, I remember you from San Francisco. I'm, t- oh, I'm so sorry. I don't really remember you. I mean, we're talking like 90, early 90s. Yeah. And I said, wow, I don't remember you. But. I, I remember said, last I, week. I, and I said, was I, <laughs> was I at least nice? And he said, no, you were great. You were always great. And so I was like, okay, good. And am I great right now? Bum, bum, bye, what's good. Hey. Anyway, <laughs> we have got to talk about Ricky Martin. Girl. Oh, I've been waiting to talk about this story all week. I've been almost canceled 4th of July to talk about this story. <laughs> there is apparently a, a restraining order filed okay. against Ricky Martin under domestic violence law after the singer reportedly splits with, get this, his nephew. Wait, what? Ricky, his <laughs> nephew. Oh my so goodness! R- here, so Ricky Martin is denying allegations that were part of the restraining oral or oral order filed against. You got him. one thing on your mind. <laughs> I do. In Puerto Rico, reps for Martin issued this below statement to People: the allegations against Ricky Martin that led to a protection order are completely false and fabricated. Reps for Martin told People: we are very confident that when the true facts come out in this matter. Our client, Ricky Martin, will be fully vindicated. So the original story first states that a $3 million lawsuit posted about a few days ago and now a restraining order. So there was a $3 million lawsuit for his manager, separate from what we're talking about, a a lawsuit against Ricky Martin. Mm -hmm. And then now restraining order separate. Yep. They write, it's not a good week for Ricky Martin. Someone who was apparently in a relationship with Martin in Puerto Rico has filed a restraining order against him, and the order was filed under Puerto Rico's domestic violence law. That means that someone really is threatening you when you put that. Martin has allegedly been lord, loitering, excuse me, loitering around the victim's home since the breakup, and Martin has reportedly been unable to accept the split. The Associated Press has reported a judge has issued a restraining order against Uh Puerto Rican superstar Ricky Martin, police said Saturday. And the order was signed Friday and authorities visited an upscale neighborhood in the north coastal town of Dorado, where the singer lives, to try to serve the order. Police spokesman Axel Valencia told Associated Press. Valencia said he could not provide further details because the order was filed under Puerto Rico's domestic violence law. Yeah. And other... So, to make matters worse, the person with whom Martin was in a relationship with was his nephew. 
Which what? Ricky Martin and his 20 year old <laughs> nephew allegedly were said yes. to have been in a consensual relationship. According to two noticio PR, appears to have obtained a copy of the restraining order. So there really is a restraining order from this 20 year old. That's not a lie. Yeah. Whether or not we can make up all the facts, but let's get into this, Cody. Okay. What were your thoughts? There's some things to unpack here. Starting let's unpack with- it. <laughs> The nephew, what in the world? I didn't even know. And it's, I looked it up and it's actually, uh, it's his sister's son. So it's his actual nephew. It's not his pretend nephew. It's not his, you know, play nephew or anything right. like or that. Right. Or sometimes, you know, or step. Sometimes we, people talk about step, you, you know, your parents yeah. remarried and it's really, yeah. yes, it's your cousin, but it's like your step cousin. And oftentimes it's, your secondary cousin it's not like immediate this is you're saying is like an immediate cousin within his family blood as far as i know it's his sister's son which is i need some wine for this (laughs) as far as i know and uh, again i'm i don't know this man i'm sorry to this man (laughs) i don't know him personally but as far as i know it is his i didn't even know he had a sister and it's his sister's son that he was. But we did, here's something we did know, Cody. Uh huh. He, he has a husband and kids of right? his own. So can we talk right? about that now? I'm all for. We never know what people's relationship status is. What well, I see you re- reading the comments, Cody, because people <laughs> have a lot to say. <laughs> I know that people. We can never get in the bedroom. We were talking about Neil Patrick Harris, and he was very open about his relationship with his boyfriend. And uh-huh. they're not dead, and they see people on the street, and they flirt. But essentially, they're in a monogamous relationship, and so yes. on and so forth. He he offered that information. Ricky Martin hasn't offered that kind of information about his relationship we don't know that they might have an open relationship and that you don't know but we probably know that it's not i don't i we probably can guess that it might not be okay to be dating (laughs) your nephew i'm judging that part if it's true what is going on in the world well but what about these porn movies that we see that twins are having sex and they're brothers and all that how do you feel about i don't like all that crap but so there was a point in time and you i feel like we've had this discussion before so you know (laughs) what my answer is gonna be and you just called me out on this shit (laughs) because i kind of had an idea of where you were on the fence with this so back in the day before I kind of unpacked it for myself. I thought it was really hot because I I personally had a fantasy to where I thought it was very hot for me to have sex with twins. Because you you said last week that you always want to be the guest star. I so always want to well, so I don't you know really want to be, the, be an I think Oreo. I'll be the main event. <laughs> it's a true Oreo cookie with you. In the middle. Well, who of... says they would be white? They would. They oh, could be wow. of any color. So okay, as long as they're twins, that's the only double, defining factor. Double chocolate stuff. I would be double stuff for sure. <laughs> <laughs> w stuff is always but, the best. But I have grown, and I have, like, a lot of my thoughts have come, and I've actually really thought about what if it was my own brother? I would be like, that's not okay. That's not something that I would ever want to do. So I have outgrown that fantasy. Let's unpack what we do know. There is a restraining order according to what we're reading. Yes. Do you agree with that? Yes. That's that's factual. Yeah. And do you think that he just got consumed and thought, It's because this nephew is in this private and let's keep it. I I don't know. I don't know what to think, but me either. I just don't even know. I don't even know if this is real, but something tells me. (laughs) I think it's real. To, to, to uh, allow my judgment for this to, for, for further down the road when more information comes out, because if anything, uh, last year or the year when Jussie Smollett got in all of that, all of that, that hubba hullabaloo. I'm going to be using that word a lot tonight. Um, all got into his hullabaloo. That anything can happen, especially with celebrities, and you never know what is really going on in people's lives. So I'm going to 
err on the side of safety and say, I go, am going to wait and see how this all turns out before I make my judgment. I don't know if it's true or not, but we shall see. Hopefully the truth will come out because the truth always comes to light, right? Let's just really quickly unpack before we read some comments what okay. we really think about a gay man getting with his nephew. Because I think the reason that we, why we don't like incest, obviously, for obvious reasons, yes. and intermarriage between families is because procreation and all the issues that we know that can happen with just mental illness and everything. I mean, yeah. we don't need to tell you that. What do we feel about there is no procreation happening between a nephew and yeah. his uncle, but is it the mental side of it all? Like, like you mentioned his sister and just too close for comfort and, yeah. and societal that we're up in arms about, because it's not like if, it, if this story is, let's just, I'm breaking it down. Nitty gritty here. Yeah. It's not like they said the kid was 18 and, or excuse or me, younger. under eight. Uh, young, yeah. Sorry. I meant un under 18. Okay. It's not like they said that. We also, like I said before, Ricky Martin might be in a marriage with kids, but he might be open to be able to do what he wants. On He might be in an open marriage, and yeah. he's free. What do we really think about two men, uncle, nephew, getting together when there is no procreation? Are we just stuck in societal mentality? So for me personally, it's about that you raised this child and you there's so much that you put into oh my god i'm trying to avoid <laughs> certain analogies say <laughs> it not, just say it not, there's so much of yourself that you have put into this child oh my god <laughs> but not sexually like actually raising the child and and having oh are you talking about the responsibility that an uncle yeah. has to a nephew exactly. and how we you look up to our aunts grow up. and how and we look I, up to our aunts and uncles yeah for... i think i look at my own nephew and i say i could never because i basically raised him so i think but that what if your nephew looks like a younger it. ricky martin no i could never he's i know he's very cute i don't think he looks like me, so he has to be very cute. <laughs> uh, okay, girl. We had to throw that but, in. <laughs> um, I could never look at him in that way. He's still a baby to me. So it, it's the, the disconnect as far as that's concerned about how could he separate av having raised this child and actually look at that person as a sexual human being. I can't look at my, my mom, my sister, my nephew, any, any of them. I can't look at them as sexual human beings. They're well, all I well, next I'm a to me. I recognize <laughs> I want my, my family to be, have sexual lives. I just don't need to imagine it in my oh, head, yeah. but I don't okay. want to deny yes. it. The other thing is I totally agree with you. We look up to our aunts and uncles and I'm not an uncle, but if I did, I would want to be a role model at best. Yeah. To layer into this, he is a father, a real dad. And would he want the same situation to happen to his children? Right. He's really looking out. He has children right now. And you know, when they say, they say, when you become a parent, all bets are off. You are now, oh no, I'm, I'm, you turn into your parents on what yeah. they, how they raised you. And it's just sh shocking to me. On top of that, more icing on this juicy story is he is a celebrity yeah. and celebrities, celebrities can't, <laughs> shouldn't really be doing any of this. So they they are held to a different standard. I don't know if it's higher. I don't know if it's lower. There, it's just different. And I think well, they that, just know that they're going to be talked about it on this show exactly. and other shows like ours. And what their their lives are open books, basically. So how is everyone weighing in on this? Before I find our next Ooh, topic, uh, <laughs> they have so much to say. <laughs> uh, Blake says maybe Ricky's husband was involved with the nephew too, and they are still carrying on, but the nephew isn't into Ricky anymore. And I was like flabbergasted. When I read that, my face, 
my whole jaw dropped to the floor. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if you were 20, we, we can't imagine not being into Ricky anymore because we're just like, it's Ricky. But he's a 20 year old, probably looks just like Ricky when he was younger and probably has pick after pick. And he's yeah. like, no, no, yeah. I'm putting a stop to this. And Le Wilden says, we have to acknowledge that there is a power dynamic between a nephew and an uncle. And to him, that's a it's it's an abuse of power. And he put it perfect. They put it perfect. Actually, yeah. those perfect statements. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So I agree 100 uh, percent. He said it so much better than I did or I could. And when I said that you put so much of yourself into your your, your uh, nephew or child, I was like, I can't say that out loud, but you made me. Thank you so much for doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Bad Bunny to moving on here. Okay. We said we were going to talk about this. Bad yes. Bunny showed off a throbbing bulge on an Instagram recent live, and it was rock hard. We've seen celebrities do some wild stuff on IG Live, including not limited to TikTokers flashing their dick, Bear Grylls accidentally doing the same, and Aaron Carter's dick slip. This is according to Cock and Cocktails. Now rapper Bad Bunny is grabbing his hard on for his fans to see and if that doesn't sell his tour out they write then we're not sure what kind of pr would move we're not sure why they write he they he was aroused on ig live but he did stand up and flash it i was so fooled by this and thought <laughs> i cannot believe this until you pointed out that that wasn't real yeah what was it about it when I put this in our live viewing audience? Oh, I'll post this did. on tags. Oh, you did. Thank you. Yeah. I'll post this on tagspodcast.com, you guys. What, how did you know immediately it wasn't a real? Because it was in his pants. He was in an IG Live. He stands up and shows the, and it's like right up, coming up to his abdomen. And I'm here for that. <laughs> I'm sure you are. But. but it was a placement of it. It looks like it started in his sternum and came all the way down. <laughs> was it a prosthetic? I was like, what is this? It doesn't even look like it's in the right place. This is totally fake. And I read some of the comments and they were like, that's not real. It looks like a microphone. It just, it was just him having fun. And I, I think that, you know, if anything, it'll boost his career because they'll be like, people will be like, Bad Bunny has such a huge penis. Oh my goodness. And I don't know, maybe there's something in the water. They're making up stories down there. Oh, I, allegedly, allegedly. In Puerto Rico. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. What do you think? I, I agree after, thank you for pointing it out. I looked a little bit deeper at it and it looks a little fake and it looks like he was having fun. And I do appreciate that. I wonder on TikTok because it is... You know, I think if you were younger, you probably wouldn't get it and maybe not notice it, perhaps. But it's putting out a big throbbing cock inside of a pair of pants. And I don't know. I'm here for it. And I think he has a sense of humor. Yeah. And it's not like he flashed the real thing or oh, even yeah. a prosthetic thing. So I think it's all fine. Blake it, just said Bad Bunny later pulled out a bottle under his shorts, revealing <sighs> that he was making a joke in order to play with his followers. Got so it. There you have it. Leave it to our listener, our wonderful viewing audience. Thank you, Blake. Dude. Yeah, I didn't and know. And the dick inspector, because I know where a dick is, and I know that that is not the correct. <laughs> I just see a big package, and I go, whoo, I lose it. <laughs> you get gaga. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't care where it's placed. I'm just, if it's in, in the right hemisphere, I'm happy. Well, in other news, out comedian Joe Lysette hosted a big pride party on Channel 4 last weekend, and okay. one standout moment saw a drag queen that goes by the name of Fat Butcher sniffing poppers in name. the audience. Yeah. yeah, great name. Twitter branded the move nothing short of iconic, with one viewer tweeting, sniffing poppers live on national television. This has to be a first. Probably, although... Uh, We've seen other things happen on live TV. There was a pride parade in Florida where I was telling you 
that a guy, a promoter on a pride float is seen in straight up gay porn showed it of uh -huh. sniffing a substance, a white substance. Oh so my. you do the math on that. On a pride <laughs> float. What, Cody, do you think of this drag queen sniffing poppers on live national TV? Is it as bad as sniffing the white substance on a pride float? I don't think it's as bad as that. I just, my main question is what and why? Like, why would you do this? Why are you giving away all of our secrets? What does this do for you on live television? And why didn't they edit out in the five second delay? Like, that all of those are running through my mind with this. I don't understand it. I just think that it's it's ridiculous that this is something that we have to even talk about. Be well, I don't think it's ridiculous, but I think that it's it shouldn't be a, such a big deal because poppers are legal. So what the heck? You mean if vacuum? You mean vacuum cleaner? <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, I love when people VCH ask. Nail polish remover, VHS, VHS tape cleaner. Is yeah, what, what is. are people thinking they're asking when they ask those things? I was at the Eagle recently in New York City, and in this little boutique of an elevator, because it's really an elevator that they sell leather goods, they uh -huh. used to sell poppers, but people still come in and ask for them even though they don't sell them anymore and they'll ask for do you have any shoe shine cleaner or what? vacuum cleaner <laughs> all these weird things like what first of all what is even a vacuum cleaner <laughs> solution look like and and what is in popper that is can do all these things i don't know <laughs> but for whatever reason people have to come up with these pseudo names to call these things I the kids though, as we're calling them, Cody. Oh, you the, know, kids, the, honey, the kids, honey. Yeah. Kids these days are using poppers left and right. I was in again Providence, Rhode Island for Pride recently, and the kids at a five o'clock Pride party okay. were pulling out the poppers. Do you want to do some poppers? Do you want to do some poppers? And I was like. I want my cocktail and first. <laughs> can I speak to the bartender first? Yeah. Do this? And can we correct this cocktail, which you guys haven't perfected, by the way, before we get to the poppers? Oh, we and where's the big dick, by the way? Where's Big Bunny when you need him? <laughs> bad Bunny. If I'm gonna Bad Bunny, Big Bunny. <laughs> where's Big Bird and Big Bunny and Bad Bunny? <laughs> Where's Bad Bunny when you need him with that prosthetic? <laughs> exactly. And so I was, but the kids are doing them left and right on the dance floor. I, know. Daytime. I, you told me. I tried it. I think I did a little bit too much. I was spinning, Cody. I was I can't, spinning I can't. at five o'clock at a cocktail party. I was spinning. PM it, or AM? PM. What? And I don't want to be spinning unless I'm sitting on at Big Bunny, Bad Bunny's. <laughs> prosthetic not the easter bunny girl oh my that god yes <laughs> that's when i want to be spinning on it like a table like a you know spinning top but other than Getting that all the eggs i bet yeah uh -huh. what do you think about the kids doing poppers left and right at the grocery store <laughs> <laughs> at trader joe's I've, i'm convinced they're doing poppers i it is I, now come to that it could never be me because the, the poppers, they give me a headache afterwards. And then I don't really want to, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to see anybody, especially on the dance floor when I'm getting a cocktail, when I'm trying to pick out a zucchini. No, I don't want to see that. I'm okay. Thank I don't want to see that, Valerie <laughs> Cherish. You got it. Okay. <laughs> Love her. Love. <laughs> Valerie Cherish forever. Um, Callie Dad says, I'm spinning, I'm spinning, I'm spinning with my hands up. Beyonce. Oh, yes, Beyonce. He also said, cassette head cleaner. Yeah, right. Who's cleaning? The People better not be seeing ordering cassette head cleaner in 2022. That's what I typed into my search, my Google search engine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Vacuum cleaner. Yes, I've heard all these things. It's just off. I don't get it. Yeah, Blake also says poppers will make you want a bigger zucchini, and you're right, it will open just, you up. Yeah, to I bigger zucchini. 
I'm here for, I am here for in the middle of sex. And I want to continue once in a while to have poppers during sex. I think it can be a lot of fun. I don't know that I'm really here for it just for shits and giggles at a cocktail party at five o'clock in the afternoon. Do you, yeah. Are you you're like that? No, I mean, it, but here I'm really here for the kids. Lot. Do what you I, want. Like I said before, it. I've said um, they have changed the the chemical makeup of poppers so yeah. much. They've outlawed so many things that they're no longer the same as they were when I first tried them. Now the chemical makeup of them, they don't really do a lot. It doesn't really do a lot for me. Before, it used to give me a head rush and I used to feel like I ruled the world. And now it just kind of makes me a little limp, and I'm I'm not okay with that. So I need you to rule be, the world. Is- <laughs> you rule the- <laughs> Back to Beyonce. <laughs> well, we have to move on. Pine Valley, excuse me, P Valley writer. Pine Valley, <laughs> come on, come um, on, all my children. Erica, Erica Kane, yeah. I, I seriously thought when this next story, P Valley was Pine Valley. It's P Valley writer claps back at weird homophobic criticism about the show's latest gay sex scene. That's right. P Valley writer who I've met, I've interviewed Patrick mm-hmm. Ian Polk. Love him. You may know him from Noah's Ark is whisking off the haters. And in, in a most recent episode of P Valley season two, the character of Lil, Lil Murder reconnected with an old friend who had just gotten out of prison, Big Teak. During the mm-hmm. scene, Murda and I love Teak... You these names, by the way. <laughs> How do you say them? <laughs> I mean, you're saying it right, but Lil Murda and Big Teak. <laughs> I can't with this. Murda and Teak. I was like, is that right? I don't know. But I love it. I love it. I'm here for okay. it. Okay. During this scene... Murder and Teague, who wasn't directly perceived as being interested in having sex with other men, went on to have sex with each other. So, and shockingly, viewers of the LGBTQ inclusive show about a non-binary person owning a strip club were baffled by the sight of gay sex on premium cable TV. Okay, it's stars, y'all. Come on now. Um, Comedian Lil Duvall wrote on Twitter, yeah, P-Valley lost me. They need a super gay advisory on movies like they got for everything else because that's a lot to see if you're not used to it. Polk then responded, the writer, Patrick Ian Polk, responded, as a writer and producer of P-Valley, specifically a writer of this episode, I encourage you to step away from Chukalisa. What does that mean, Cody? Uh, it's Chukalisa. It's what a, does that it's, mean? It's a town in Mississippi. It, I think it's fiction. Chukalisa. Chukalisa, okay. yeah. So as a writer and producer of P-Valley, specifically a writer I of this episode. I watch the show so much. Yeah, I want to hear what your <laughs> thoughts in a second. I encourage you to step away from Chukalisa. This show is not for you. Go watch something else because the gay ain't going nowhere. Cody, you watch this show, P-Valley. Why do you love it? What was this scene about? And why are people up in arms? Go. So I love this show. I love Patrick Ian Polk so much and i think chuckalisa a major southern city stands for his fictional town of Chuck. yes yeah, so okay it's, so it's a fictional yeah. yes it's a fictional town uh i think the representation of this world and any and everybody is there and the storyline just engrosses you it's such a slice of life um of southern being southern black poor what have you, all of these things. And it's so non-binary. Amazing. Yes. Oh my gay. gosh. Yes. And uh, dealing with being on the down low, all of these things, it represents the prison so system. Many, it represents so many different types of people. And it is, it just, I love the show. And I can't speak more highly of it. And this this episode in particular was so shocking and surprising to me because the setup for it is Lil Murder and <laughs> Uncle Clifford. You see it so well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the South, okay? <laughs> that's, and that's another reason I love this show. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where Lil are you Martyr. from? West West Virginia? Oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I should not have even said it. Uh, I used to live in Norfolk, Virginia. Yes. 
in Hampton, Virginia. My whole father's side of the family is right. from there. And I, I mean, I love the South. I can't get enough of it. And this just takes me back home every now and then. So every Sunday, it takes me back home. So yes, Lil Murder and Uncle Clifford, who is the proprietor right. of the Pea Valley Strip, Strip Club, they are they have been romantically involved for the first season already so that hasn't been an issue for straight men again i'm using air quotes thank you very much <laughs> as far as season one was concerned because it was a masculine presenting man and a feminine a very very feminine presenting man i think he um, clifford might even uh identify as non-binary or even transgender so that is not a problem for straight men that watch this show. When the problem came about when Lil Murder and Big Teak, who was recently re uh, uh, released from the prison system, his had, cellmate, yes, his cellmate, and they were really close. All that had been led up to it was that they were really close in in when they were incarcerated. So when they had their sex scene, it was two masculine black men having sex. And I think that that is what really, really shocked people because that type of love, that type of affection, that type of sex hasn't been portrayed in the mainstream media. I don't I don't know if I can ever recall a time where that has been portrayed. What the, the populace in general is used to seeing is uh, two effeminate men, one masculine, one effeminate, but uh, but never two masculine black men having sex. So it's an underrepresented, upper underrepresented. Uh, I don't even know if I said that right. I had a couple of drinks, y'all. Uh, <laughs> Let me ask you a question, Cody. I know you're saying it's an underrepresented grouping of yes. men or having it, sex with or men, love. yes, or love or love mm -hmm. showing love. Let me ask you this question because as you were talking, it got me thinking: Did the storyline follow this? ultimate encounter that you witness in other words it sounds like what you're saying is it did earlier episodes show those two close and that it was believable i guess is the word that they would end up in this thing so if it was believable to you then i i'm here for the drama i get often caught up in the production and a storyline uh -huh. then i get to my race and all the things that i'm really proud of and i live for culturally to mm -hmm. be represented but was it believable first oh, and 100%. foremost 100 the percent for these two characters for these two characters oh, yes. then that's 100%. then then i am here for it that i always go for believability first and foremost before i get to my cultural and all my acronyms and everything that i live for secondary but was yeah. it believable then i'm here for it at first, it it just portrayed them as two people that were very close, it or like brothers. But then they started to layer in things where jealousy was involved, and where I feel like the sex scene kind of came out of no. It didn't come out of nowhere because I think that I, they set it up in a way to where it was a shock, but it was something. It was a shock that you kind of saw coming. Does that make sense? It does. Yes. Because and that's what that's believability. Yeah. But a twist totally and a turn in a dramatic show. Because in my mind, I was like, and even in the most recent episode, because girl, I'm caught up. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting me excited to watch this show. <laughs> I'm caught up. And in the most recent episode, the two of the other characters that are in the show, they think, oh my God, are these two guys? having sex because they know Lil Murder is enamored or in love with Uncle Clifford. Oh, so it's a yes. true triangle and questioning the true nature of where is this headed because we know Lil Murder has feelings for another an, man. Another man. Yes. Okay. And then lastly, what do we think that this is saying for the community of the Black culture in general because do you, do you think this will help because and i ask you because you watch the show and because yeah. you are of a black you, person yeah. yes yes i i think that this will move the conversation forward i love that this is something that they have actually brought to the forefront and that 
now people are having to kind of come to terms with i think or a little deal bit. with exactly <laughs> Cause we deal happens. with so much other bo big boobs and blondes and Barbie and Ken. <laughs> and there's plenty of that in this. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But uh, heaven forbid we have two masculine brothers getting exactly. it on. Two black gay men that are, are masculine, more masculine. That like, and everybody's losing their mind. Little du Duval needs to just mind his own business. And like Patrick Ian Polk said, go watch something else because this well, is not for you. And you know what Brighton brings up to mind is Jeremy Ross Lopez, our co-host, the other day he says, when we were talking about bros and white folk, white gay folk, are, and I asked the question to Jeremy, do you, are, do you think that America will be ready for bros, which is going to be a Hollywood produced gay rom-com? And he says, mm -hmm. I don't really care if they are. Exactly. And, and if they don't, and if they don't, if they're not ready for it, then they should skip it or they should sit there and shut up. And I think that's exactly what Patrick Ian Polk is saying too. either skip it. It's on the star. By the way, he said it was on a cable network. It's on stars. It's on, stars. It's on a streaming yeah. platform. So people are paying to the, the platform of stars. And so sorry, but you get to, we need these stories to be told. They are real exactly. life stories. Sorry if it makes you uncomfortable. That's what art does. True art makes you uncomfortable. Why does it make you uncomfortable? Good. It's because Good we don't see it enough in culture. And it's because it's underrepresented. So we need to, there is a need to see more of true art form. And it sounds like it's done artistically and oh, yeah represents a community of people that really does exist so i, I am never knew i wanted it. to be a stripper that's how much that's how beautiful Honey, it is i could give you some tips <laughs> i'm going to actually pole dance i i'm i'm love the go-go -go aspect of it but i do actually want to learn how to pole dance because of this show it's so wait, wait, let's take class because i'm my let's ankles back it. can we take class together and we'll report back i'm ready to... okay summer it takes a lot of upper body strength Honey, I got that. <laughs> I'm not you. using air quotes. I'm doing chest pumps, audience <laughs> listeners. Okay, what are people saying before we move on to this com this uh, topic that you wanted to talk about? Oh, yeah. So, Callie Dad says, I laugh at these straight men who can't take seriously. Some, some of them may be triggered by past trauma. Oh, my goodness. Oh, <laughs> he's speaking the and truth, I think. He totally is. And the setup for P-Valley... M to M led us there. And the deeper y'all go into the story, the better Steve gets at saying little murder. So good job, boo. <laughs> I'm clapping. And Lil Weldon says, child, we all know those hyper happy masculine men are the first ones to bend over. Oh my goodness. I wasn't gonna say anything like that. Hey, that that's what the people comment. are saying. That's okay. What people say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. We we got it, Cody. All right. Yeah. That's it, right, Cody? Because we got to move on it, to this. We got okay. Watch. I'm gonna watch Pine Valley. I mean, P, P Valley. I can't <laughs> wait on the Stars <laughs> Network. You thank they you, Cody. Totally get a character named Erica Kane. They should oh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> e, no, it should be E. Period Kane. E. Kane. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on to a recent Reddit thread. I steal all of my tricks underwear. Am I a freak? They asked the question. They asked the question. I've been embarrassed to tell anyone about this, but I'm pretty sure I have a fetish. Whenever a guy comes over for a hookup, once the clothes hit the floor, I secretly hide his underwear in my bed. I grab it off the floor when he's in the bathroom or not looking and stuff it under the bottom fitted sheets against my mattress. When he gets dressed oh later, I fiend under utter confusion about where his underwear might have gone when he tells oh me he can't find it and pretend to help him look all over the room. Ultimately, he leaves without it and chalks it up to one of those weird unsolved mysteries. I've done this at least a dozen times with different guys when I'm hosting. I try to stuff the latest Conquest underwear in my pocket on the way out the door. The reason I do this is because I find it such a turn on to collect them. They usually oh have a slight scent of a worn man musk, and I find nothing hotter than a guy in his tight briefs or jock strap. I now have a huge collection of these. Am I a freak? Calvin Kling. Well, mm. honey, this 
we could talk about this for what days. We should have just started oh, this, yes. the show off with this. <laughs> I want to tell you right off the bat. Go. I am wearing a pair of a Trix underwear as we speak doing this show on episode <laughs> 300. But, but I did not steal them. Like many of my tricks that have stayed over throughout the last several years, they were lazy and lost them in the bundle of sheets, and we couldn't find them, and they ran out the door. I am not kidding you, Cody. You Girl, I'm about to log over. off. No. <laughs> I kid you not. I packed in my luggage a pair of tricks, and they're cute underwear. They fit me. They're Calvin Klein's, and I washed them. I didn't smell them, but he. I've had so many tricks leave their underwear and i don't know what they were thinking because whenever i've spent the night over someone's house and i couldn't find my underwear i'm looking over everywhere these are tricks that didn't even bother to look in other words they didn't ask me hey hey you because of course they didn't remember my name hey mm -hmm. you i can't find my underwear no they put on their pants without them and later cleaning up cleaning up the hordery mess I find, oh, what's the, well, this is a pair of their underwear, but it's cute underwear, and I don't have their phone number. I wash it, and it goes into my bin. I have a That's whole right. collection. I am currently wearing a pair, but it's not for the same reasons I did not steal them. So I rest my case, Your Honor. I don't know if I believe you 100%, oh, like the Ricky Martin well, case. <laughs> I mean, can I tell you one more story? One more story, and then Go I ahead. want to hear from you. Go ahead. Yeah. I have had a foot fetish for years, and it's subsided more recently. I'm more into other stuff. But during my, a heightened period of my foot fetish, I asked dancers and bartenders if I could buy, so purchase uh -huh. their socks. Actually, some of them actually, for 20 bucks, gave me their dirty socks. <laughs> bartenders on duty. Now nah, I'm really locking up. No. <laughs> and I was into the scent of it all. And I have their socks too. But what? yeah, I'm not even kidding you. I'm not really into that right now. But it satisfied a desire at the time and probably put to bed a long foot fetish thing that I had. And I got off on it, but I told them and I paid for them. So I guess the question on this Reddit thread yes. is, is it okay to steal without the person knowing? You heard my stories, but everything was copacetic and agreed upon. What are your thoughts, Allegedly. Cody? Allegedly. Oh, <laughs> he's just, he may or may not be using air quotes. <laughs> I think that you probably told them that the price of entrance into your bedroom was a pair of underwear, and that's why they left them. And you just no, I am not kidding you. <laughs> I am not kidding you that I'm wearing a pair of tricks. No, underwear. I believe you. I believe and you. But you I, told I am not them when they came in. I you had to not, leave your underwear because <laughs> I don't have an underwear fetish. But I totally do. But I need more underwear. You know, you can never have enough underwear. And underwear. That's true. So I'm like, hey, I've got a whole stash extra stash now so i have an underwear fetish i have so many pairs of underwear that i have purchased <laughs> oh. allegedly and i'm using allegedly. your clothes on <laughs> but there was a point in time when i was young and in high school and living in virginia in an apartment complex <laughs> and you would go P to wash P -Valley. <laughs> and, P -Valley. <laughs> and you would go to the laundry mat that was on site at the apartment complex and a young Cody may or may not have stolen a pair of underwear that a man had worn. May or may not. This is, I can't recall 100%, but I, yes, I, okay, I did it. I stole underwear from the laundromat <laughs> because I have a fetish. And now that I can actually purchase the underwear, or I could even go online and purchase used underwear. You could, yeah. And probably so spend a I lot think that of... that's what this person needs to do because we actually need to ag address the question too. Yeah, let's so... address the question. <laughs> He's. I think it's okay to have these fetishes. I'm going to just state my opinion and then you state yours and then we'll read some yeah. comments and we got to wrap this show up. Yes. But I think that it's not okay to steal. It is, as somebody yes. wrote, it is okay. Kelly Dad says, stealing undies is, is a fetish. And a misdemeanor at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> I think the times I've been into underwear and I've, I've smelled, it's I've done it and left it there. I think that's fun to steal that 
moment that you feel you got a whiff of somebody and that's okay i purchased socks and they've left their underwear in my i'm serious they have and i acquired it but i actually didn't smell it i just was because i'm not into the underwear i just washed it and acquired a new pair of underwear okay i believe you sure Um, you better Um, I do think that this person murder. needs, needs a <laughs> little murder. Um, little, murder. <laughs> little murder. Did I say it right? Yeah, you, you're close. You're getting so okay, much better. Okay. I agree with Blake. Um, I do think that there's other ways that he can, uh, you know, make sure right. that his fetish is is really it, it, he can do it with exactly without even without stealing. You can purchase. He, I, yeah, you know what? I have so much underwear. I will send him underwear if he pays me. Just let me know. And yeah. I'm a very reasonably priced bitch. Okay. <laughs> I, that's good advice. And I agree with that, Cody, because it's chances are, and this is where you're going to believe me now. Chances are, if you tell somebody you're fetish, like I told these bartenders a couple of times about the socks issue, mm-hmm. and they were like, yeah, give me 20 bucks. And they on duty went into the, back room took off their socks put on their shoes without socks and worked the rest of their shift but gave without me their socks so- yeah well i don't care no. what they do after they give me the song <laughs> you got but, what you need it right <laughs> i guess my point and i do have a point is is if you are just honest and you you get over the fact that people are going to judge you and you just tell people hey this is my fetish they're at the best they're going to say no you know, I'm not in, into that, but they yeah. nine times out of 10, they might be like, yeah, what do I care? Here, have it, have at it, G- have your fantasy. Give me my $20. <laughs> or give me my $20 <laughs> and you could do that too, but stop stealing underwears, Reddit thread listener. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're going to piss somebody off and it's not cute. And yeah. And underwear is expensive. Thank you very much. Well, this has been so anything you want to read really quickly before we salute everyone. Goodbye. Blake says, find someone who's into it and they can trade. We're not going to do thirst trap. Okay. Do it really quick. Yeah. Really I'm have to quick. Really quick. Put it in the mix. Okay. I'll put it in the mix. As we you love know, to do. this is my favorite. Okay. We love straight up gay porn, and the reason why we love them is because Zach, out of straight up gay porn, posts every week porn stars. This week it's 19 gay porn stars, and he asks the question who took the best photo or video? And our job is to vividly describe in an audio podcast why we chose the one that we picked. And Cody, who did you pick this week? My vote goes to the lovely Luke Trong. Um, I did <sighs> ask my boyfriend who I met. That. Yes, yes, that's that is not why and we're I trying to, him. and we're trying to get him on the show. That is not why I picked him. It, the video is amazing, and he just bought a fuck machine, an automated fuck machine, and he decided wow. to share it with everyone. So I think he's a superhero. Not all superhero wears cape. Some some of them wear fuck machines, and he says that you can have fun and have a dick fuck you anywhere and wear anywhere you want and however you want and he really proved that with this fuck machine i just love saying fuck um he's getting (laughs) fucked on the floor he's getting fucked on somebody's couch he's getting fucked while texting it's amazing and his ass looks beautiful i did ask my boyfriend who he picked and he picked at first we both picked the interracial couple there that's disco dick and elijah wild you know, because they look like us and he didn't want to hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> but then he came back with his real two true choice, which is Raheem Shabazz. Of course. Who do you pick? I pick Johnson Poppy, who is midway through the mix, who's sitting okay. on a backdrop of a bed. He is a very sexy body, just sexy beard beautiful lips i looked him up beautiful dick and he's lying there with his abs hard beautiful feet by the way which he's showing in the picture oh, yes and he's really yummy i just want to climb on top of him because i love and kiss him because he's really that hot to me and he just kind of is one of those in the mix that maybe you overlooked but he gets my vote for this week's pick. Oh, no, I Look- him. <laughs> you like him too yeah oh, sexy yes. right he's- oh it's good yeah, good pick. Anybody else for, before we head out? 
So the kids are saying, Llewellyn what are the kids says, saying? Johnson Poppy for him too, and Sam Ledger from Daddy Two Three Four. Damn, that ass is amazing. And to your pick, we are in contact with Luke Trong, and I hung out with him in Palm Springs, and he is going to hopefully do the show sometime soon. So bring your questions and tell him, ask okay. him about that fuck machine. I am. He, he better have on. it on hand for us. We'll tell, I'll reach out to him tell him that he was a pick for us, and hopefully that'll twist his arm to come on the show really soon. Yes. Okay, James says Johnson Poppy for me too. Okay, now. I love it. it. Well, this has been so much fun. Um, I am here in the Bay Area, so say hi if you're out and about. I'm going to the Baloney show at Oasis Friday night. Check it out. There's still some tickets. I would love to meet you. You can follow us at Tags Podcast and reach out to us. Follow my co-host, Cody Maurice Doggett. Uh, he's a life coach at KMD Coaching. KMD Coaching or at Mr. Maurice. Cody, so much fun as always. Yes, my love, always. Thanks, live virtual audience. Thanks for weighing in. This show gets repackaged and comes in your feed as an audio podcast. But go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash tags podcast to watch this video if you want to see all the air quotes and <laughs> the accoutrement. You'll see it yes. there. Thanks, y'all. So much fun. And in the meantime, continue having hot, Gay, Gay sex. sex. Yes. Yeah.